Hi, I'm Brian King, and I'm the author of this book, Strategies for Building Successful Relationships with People on the Autism Spectrum. Let's relate. I've been asked a lot of questions about this book, so I figured I'd answer them very directly. First question is, well, what is this book about? Why did I decide to write it? Well, the book is about relationships. It's the most important thing in our lives. It's the thing that allows us to get our needs met, to grow, to feel fulfilled. Relationships is where it's at. And for people on the autism spectrum, relationships are the hardest things for us to build because those are the skill sets that we are not just born with. Those are things we need to be taught. And my sons, my three boys and I are all on the autism spectrum. And I struggled my entire life to figure out and decode this thing called socialization and relationships. I didn't discover until I was 35 that I was on something that is now referred to as the spectrum. I learned about it because my 13-year-old, who was then 7, entered first grade and began to have so many problems that he basically couldn't function in that environment. And when I saw that the school he was in at the time refused to step up and support him, I knew I had to become an thorough expert on everything that was the spectrum and everything he would need to succeed in life. And over the years, I've realized that relationships and communication as it currently exists doesn't work for anybody. Communication in general is so riddled with assumption and presumption and mind reading that it causes more problems than it solves. So in order for me to be able to successfully communicate and have relationships, I realized I needed to figure out a way that allowed me to effectively connect with other people while getting all that mind reading stuff out of the way that causes so many problems and doesn't allow people on the spectrum who don't get nonverbal communication to get the information they need to effectively connect with someone else. So when I sat down to write this book, I began with this premise. I need to figure out how we can communicate effectively as though nonverbal didn't exist. In other words, how do we say what we mean and mean what we say? How do we get it all out there in a very concrete way, safely, so that we're not afraid to talk to each other? Because a lot of this mind reading and assumption is about being afraid to hurt each other's feelings. So people lie, they dodge, they hint, they suggest because they don't want anger in their conversations. So I had to come up with a lot of strategies that allowed us to freely and confidently and comfortably talk to each other without any fear of anger so that we could say what it is we want to say, get it all out there, and honestly connect with each other without the nonverbal because now we can speak to each other confidently. And having been trained as a social worker helped too because I knew how to soften some of the language I knew how to process with people to kind of get to the bottom of what is it about communication that you want, why are you communicating the way you are, and why don't you do it the way you want to. So that skill set helped tremendously. So when I was finally able to boil down what it is I was doing and what the principles were, I put it into a book. Another motivation I have besides helping my kids have a set of tools to succeed in the world Another thing that motivated me is all the social skills trainings out in the world that get close to what's necessary to effectively communicate, but then really miss it in some essential parts. The main part being that a lot of these curriculums, if you will, still advocate mind reading. They want you to look at the other person and say, well, what do you think this person's thinking? My approach is baloney. I'm not a mind reader. I'm not psychic. I want to ask a question. I want to ask the person what they're thinking. I want to ask them for feedback on what it is I said. I don't want to look at their face, their body language, and try and figure it out because I don't know what any of that stuff means. It's unreliable. But what is reliable is a person speaking up for themselves. So I advocate open, honest, concrete communication that doesn't require a lot of decoding. And for some people, they're afraid to do this because it's risky. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the other person's going to take it. Well, in the book, I describe how to introduce this concept into your relationships so it doesn't seem so foreign, so it doesn't seem so out of the blue, so the person isn't shocked by the notion that, you mean we're actually going to ask for what we want? You mean we're actually going to say what's on our minds? 
how revolutionary, how refreshing. The people I've taught this stuff to are excited because their relationships become so much better and richer because there's no more of that hiding and being afraid to speak up. People get so much closer and more connected and their relationships become so much more abundant because they're actually communicating completely for the first time in their lives. They're connecting in ways that they never considered possible because their whole lives they've been taught to dodge and hint and tell little white lies. And well, it's okay to lie sometimes to protect the person's feelings. Not realizing that all of those little rules sabotage the very relationships they care about most. And one of the things, actually two of the principles that I advocate the most are negotiation and cooperation or partnership. Because that's how we learn to introduce these new concepts into relationship. We negotiate them in. A negotiation is leading to an agreement about how to do us, how to do our relationship. What are the rules about open communication? What are the rules about agreeing to receive certain kind of feedback in the way we want to hear it? Because there's this idea out there about constructive criticism. Telling somebody what they need to hear. Well, that's fine and good, but if the person's not going to hear it because of the way you delivered it, it's lost on them. So part of negotiation is agreeing to how you're going to give them the feedback so that they're not only ready to hear it, they're grateful for it because they asked you to give it to them in that way. There are so many tools in this book that, in, in my opinion, revolutionize communication because it's what it needs to be in order for people on the spectrum and people in the world to be able to communicate with each other more effectively. The main thing I hope that readers take away from this book is that communication doesn't need to be something you're afraid of. It doesn't need to be something where you're afraid that you might hurt your feelings or someone else's feelings. It's something that has so much power, something that is really a key to allowing us to reach new levels of our own potential and new levels of connection than we ever experienced before. Because once I discovered all these tools, my relationships have become so much deeper, as have the relationships of my clients. And I hope that the readers of this book will experience as well, because there's so much out there waiting for us to experience in life. If we can only get rid of all the noise that gets in the way, all of this assumption and presumption and projection, Get it out of the equation. Make everything direct, concrete, honest, but in a way where you feel supported while you're doing it and while you're supporting the other person. And together, we're going to grow in ways we never thought imaginable. So I wrote this book for myself, my boys, and for you. And I hope you enjoy it.